Hello there, THP 494 and 598. All right, so uh, we just finished talking about dictionaries and lists, and that's, I know, super heady and uh, a little bit crazy to hold on to. So let's take a step away from all of that, and let's instead do something a little bit more fun and make some pixels happen. So we're going to actually move up here to our uh, root of our network. We're going to add another base, and we're going to call this replicator. Let's dive inside here. Okay, so we might imagine here in this particular example that we want to think about how we could use a replicator to do a simple process over and over and over again. And I know that there's some confusion, right, in our brains about when do we replicate and when do we instance and how do we kind of like pull those apart. And one way to think about that is that we can use replicators uh, as a kind of for loop, right? Replicators are really a for loop, um, but for operators. So hold on to that uh, as we start to think about it, and hopefully that will make some more sense. Okay, so in that kind of vein, right, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and, and we're going to take the first line of shall I compare these to a summer's day, and we're going to think about how could I draw each one of these words on its own text dat, or excuse me, on its own text top. Okay, there are a bunch of different ways that we could do that, but let's think about how we could use replicators to do it. So first up, let's go ahead and convert this. We're going to convert it from uh, being just a simple line of text into being a table. So we're going to split the cells at a space. So I took out slash t and put in an operator that's just, or excuse me, put it in a, just an empty space there. And now we can see that sure enough, plum, 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 we break it at spaces. Um, let's go ahead and attach this to a null. Now, because we've only used replicators in terms of rows instead of columns, and because uh, before we confuse ourselves too much, um, we're going to go ahead and this time around we're going to transpose this into rows. Now, we don't have to do that, right? We could set up our replicator to use columns instead. But for the sake of uh, replicating what we've already done, uh -huh, see what I did there? Uh, for repeating the method that we've already used, I'm going to go ahead and insert a transpose. And our transpose is going to go ahead and take all of our columns and convert them into rows. Okay, now we have something that should look pretty familiar in the world of replicating. I've got a series of rows and I want to take an operator and I want to um, substitute in some value for each one of the rows here inside of this table. So to that end, I'm going to go ahead and grab a text top. And what I want to do is I want to create a new texture, right, with this word in it. So I can grab this dat, I can drag it here on top of my text top. I can specify that dat is the parameter that I want to actually associate that with. And for the row, right, um, the row I want to use is going to be me.digits. Right, and we're not going to worry about the fact that this is uh, 2 right now hold your horses. I know it seems like we should care, but for our master operator, we're not going to worry too much about that. Okay, let's go ahead and add a replicator component here to our network, and we'll scooch things out a little bit. Now again, because replicators act as a kind of for loop for us, we need to think about uh, a few different things here. So this is essentially our range, right? That's what we're dealing with over here, how many times I want to do something in terms of rows. And then this is the thing that I want to do again and again and again. So here in my replicator, I'm going to specify that null1 is my template dat table, right? This is the thing that's going to specify how many times I do it. And then my uh, text top here is going to be my master operator. And we can see, brump. There we go, that's pretty good. One thing to note is that I need to turn off this ignore first row because I want to start at zero, which corresponds to zero over here. And I'm doing that because in this case, I don't have a header row. Okay, so now I've got, shall I compare thee to a summer's day? All is individual textures. Now we can see looking at this, right, that I could probably save a little bit of space, right? I could slim this down or change this up a little bit. So let's kind of look here at summer and that can be our kind of indicator a little bit. So maybe what we want to do is we want to come to the common page and we want to start to dial down some of our resolution here a little bit. And maybe we can call this like 80. Great. And we can come back to our replicator 
and recreate everything. Excellent. So this isn't perfect, but this isn't bad. And we're going to roll with this for right now. This isn't going to totally do what we want, but it's going to get us kind of close to the kind of feeling that we want, right? And here we've done exactly, exactly what we wanted. We've used our text top as our kind of master operator, right? Our instructions for what we want to do. We've got a table that specifies how we want to do those things. And then we have all of our replicants that are based off the combination of those things. We might, for example, think about if we had another line of this particular poem in here, right? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. And if we plug this into our stream, we should see everything change right along with it. And in fact, if we backed this up and we inserted a switch, and plugged both of these into the switch, we could then run the index of our switch to see these update. Excellent. Okay, so that is getting close uh, to what we're going to want to work with. The important thing here for us to think about, right, is that when we're replicating, again, I know I'm belaboring this point terribly, but replicating, we're using a master operator to complete an operation that's um, rel uh, related to a particular operator or series of operators. Right, so this is about doing the instructions that are in this thing, right? This operator, base, component, whatever. We've used lots of different ways to think about this. And to make copies of that that have values that change for each iteration of it, for each replicant. Okay, so we've built some re we've built a replicating system here, and that's Jammin, um, and we're going to come back to it in one second, right? So uh, it's going to be important to think about what some of these dimensions are. Don't worry. We'll hold on to that. But for right now, we've done some replicating. Okay, so this is replicating. What then is instancing? And how can we kind of pull apart the difference between replicating and instancing? And when do those two things live in a world, in the same world, where we want to take advantage of both of them?